Hey, and welcome to High 45, discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. And this is an absolutely crazy week, as you can tell evidenced by the just, thumbs just up. Just because it's freaking hot. Oh my god. It's like, it must be like 30 something degrees it's here. Too here. The split's just... Yeah. Fan pointing at us, so that's kind of helping, but yep. geez Louise. <laughs> geez Louise. Jeez Louise, love that phrase. I'm using it in everything. Uh, run down. We run down. Okay, well, yeah, uh, to start with, I have, uh, oh yeah, this uh, new uh, holograms are, are doing stuff, but not the ones you knew of before. <laughs> they are, they're doing I, stuff. I was telling you, like, I have an idea. I have to hide it. I can't like, just, you know, reveal Here's everything. Here's a new item, news item, you know. Well, it's a very quick story. I have story. a secret. I have it a secret is. to tell you later on. Oh, Stay tuned. <laughs> What's yours? It's a bit lame. Uh, yeah. Mini one, I couldn't because I couldn't find anyone. Uh, Android is taking over Nokia. Oh, and yeah. Symbian. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I went after this. China has a giant bus. <laughs> Alright, there you go. It, it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's China's sounds better. first ever bus. You think with yeah, like a million people, they well, see that's what caused the traffic before. jam. You know, it was just like fuck it, we need a bus. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, Within a few minutes, I already said the F words. So. Yep. Uh, uh, automated hydroponic lettuce farm. That's kind of epic. Yeah. That's automated weed is. Probably next. Yeah, obviously. definitely. I mean, lettuce, come on. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, well then, the, the final thing, the singularity topic this week is uh, employment. The future of employment, how people get jobs, how you'll actually work, how you'll do everything, and just our thoughts on that. Thanks to Ted. Yeah. But uh, we're going to be winging it a bit. Yeah, yeah. Just We've had bit. ideas from it before, but... Yeah, yeah. I know. It'd be good fun. Lots it of fun. Is. Got lots of ideas to talk about there. But before we get into it, uh, mm -hmm. we have an announcement. Do 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 no, you can do it. Yeah. Okay, well, we have this fantastic, fantastic thing we've been working on for a while. Uh, just a way for a, kind of like a community site where we can actually share our, our ideas about the future and what you think is going to happen. Uh, it's called HiveAI.com, so come and check it out. See what everyone's posted, see what future ideas they have, and yeah. uh, tell us if you agree with them or tell us if you think we're full of shit. You didn't sell them on the, the problem. Well, what's oh, the problem? Go learn your pitches. Well, uh, you were going to do the pitch. We discussed this before. It was, you were going to introduce it, and you're like, nah, you do it. It's like... Well, again, okay, the problem is, you, you saw our last episode where we were talking about you know, didn't. tracking your thoughts and stuff, all that. The problem is, um, we've bitched and moaned about this before, Facebook is not the right culture to actually share your thoughts about, exactly. about say, the technology and singularity and AI and futurism and, you know, yeah, yeah. those thoughts on the nature of reality and, and what humans are and all that sort of stuff. Because mm -hmm. you post them and you just, people are just like, <laughs> Yeah. It's not the right culture. And then there's... Not really any other cultures out there that do it. Yeah. So we've got, a, it's like an FML type script, and you just basically post, you get 420 characters at the start, post a cool, interesting thought, mm -hmm. and then anyone can reply and comment, and you can yeah. vote it up and down and stuff. Exactly. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a Can't basic start, but um, eventually we, we've got a, a lot of cool ideas for where this can go. Like, yeah. eventually, you know, going more into like, you know, massive sort of mind mapping type. You, we haven't even thought the UI yet. Yeah, it's just more just a place that you can actually record your thoughts about the future and what you think is going to happen. Yeah. And then other people, the, the internet can actually judge and see if they agree with it. No, them. no, there's no judging. Of course there's judging. There's judging, it. but it's the right culture to post Yeah, yeah exactly. Stuff. It's not just everyone's going to go negative and then it, they it, say, you're yeah. wrong and we're going to kill your dog. You know? Yeah. There'll be very little dog coming in. This it's not like, oh my god, I bought shoes today. Yeah. yeah. Do you like my shoes? Well, it could be the future of shoes. Yeah, the future of shoes. No. Might lead to like you know tracking foot tracking. Yeah. Like the Nike uh, thingy. That could be kind of cool. I want to put like cat um, cat stuff so I can track my cat. <laughs> I don't own a cat, so that's kind of the first step. Anywho, we haven't even started yet. Yeah, anyway. Who's gonna start? Ah, uh, do you want to start? Sure. Excellent. I'm just gonna start with this because I love this because I'm a massive Android fanboy. It's not a good thing. Yeah, yeah I'm. Are you? I'm, <laughs> I'm not a fan. I. Mm, I'm a fanboy for the one that's actually gonna work uh -huh. out. Okay. I'm a fanboy for futurism. It's <laughs> um, Android is now actually outselling. They've had been outselling iPhone for a long time now, for the last like at least six to eight months. It's been a good few months, month, month by month. Like there's still more iPhones out there than Androids, but it's getting there based on the trends. Mm. But now there's news articles coming out now that are saying that they're actually taking over Nokia, which is Symbian. Awesome. Which which Nokia is like you know they're I think number one. Yeah, number one. Yes, number one. Then Blackberry's number, one. Yeah. number two. Uh, no, uh, and iPhone overtook Blackberry. I'm okay, so certain. iPhone's definitely the number one now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And we've been saying that um, if if Google and Android play their cards right, they're going to end up actually owning every single screen yeah. everywhere. I mean, you look at that; they're in cars now. They're in you know phones. Um, you look at say Chrome OS. If that kicks us when mm -hmm. that comes out, exactly. Holy crap! They own the entire desk, the web OS. Yeah. 
anything they'll own screen. every single platform. And then on top of that, they'll own every single app market. Yeah. When and every single website becomes an app. Yeah, you say like, what, what, <laughs> what is your screen being used for until you just yeah. download your apps for that? And it just doesn't just go into like, at the moment we've probably got, you know, tablets, computers, desktops, uh, mobiles, and then probably getting more into like surface stuff. Only consumer level talk about yeah. here, but then I mean, as more consumer stuff goes, like, you know, fridges, Android running fridges, like that'd be great. Yeah, and tracking all your items. Yeah. And then... I'm not sure if they've been announced yet, but I would guarantee that an Android powered fridge will come out in the next few years. Cool. Yeah, It'll be made by some like a uh, Asian manufacturer. Yeah, it's, it's a nice easy yeah. OS. You just chuck it in there. It's a touchscreen thing. I mean, the fridges touchscreens are already well, touchscreens. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So they're gonna they're basically kicking ass, and it just comes down to distribution again. Yeah, it's just it's the Mac versus PC battle. Like you know, focus on the OS, the yeah, software, exactly. not the hardware. So, but we've been talking about um, you know, Google if they actually do all that, you know, do no evil is gonna be a little difficult to stick to with everything. Yeah. Although they do, they, the good thing is that they are, their entire point, at least the founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, their entire point is to create AI. Yeah. Doing the whole Hive AI type model where, uh, Hive, <laughs> where they um, pull all the different interactions and stuff of, you know, millions of humans doing their stuff. Yeah. And then try and work out That'll the intelligence, intelligence in that. Yeah. Where's the algorithms we can pull from all this data? Well, it's such a better way to learn as well. Like going back to the fridge model, just because I kind of like it. Uh, you can actually start m yeah. comparing that with everyone else's fridges out there and how they actually use it and how it works. And you yeah. be able to work out like in some equilibrium. Yeah, like that's this it. This guy is, this guy is Tommy. Exactly. This is what's in his fridge. Yeah, that's this it. You can actually start. Thin, this is what's in their fridge. This stuff, really. And I mean, because then you can actually get innovation actually happening that way. Yeah. Whereas now, like, they're all different things. Like, I doubt they were even, yeah, yeah, even similar. Yeah. 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 Kind of, you know, rudimentary internet stuff. <laughs> rudimentary internet stuff. Internet connectivity. There we go. That, that's what I was talking about. I was speaking too fast and I just ran out of words, so... You know, oh, like, a hundred years from now, that quote's going to be on a blog somewhere. Yeah, no, Claire. Rudimentary internet stuff. Interesting grace. <laughs> Want that on my tombstone, people, please. <laughs> uh, fantastic. Oh well, shall we go into my one? Yeah. Okay. This is really cool. Uh, the whole okay in Manchester Airport, they've just created this hologram to uh, welcome passengers onto it. Now I say hologram because it's not a hologram. It's a it's a perspex cutout of a woman, and a, pro a projection is placed on there. Okay. So you get this lovely thing here. Like here we go. Ah, oh, you kidding me? Nets down. Nets down because I'm not I'm not sitting in the right spot. Uh, I can oh, get cool. there over you're there. Not, you're not seeing in the right oh, spot. Oh, well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the problem. Naturally. It's the, the nature <laughs> Welcome of Welcome to the 21st century. Yeah, you're yeah. not seeing in the right spot. Hmm. Well, anyway. Look, she doesn't look very pretty, though. Oh, no. They could have picked it. Actually, that was a top comment on Reddit, I think. They really could have chosen a better model for this. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, burn. Well, she's average. I guess she's less yeah, threatening. Yeah. Hey, yeah. it works. There's just a thin bit of pers uh, perspex going on there. But it is kind of cool. In the regard that, yeah, they've just got someone to welcome them there, and it's becoming that very futuristic Blade Runner type thing where the yeah. actual, uh, yeah, actual person standing there welcoming them to it, and that'd be pretty cheap to do. I mean, projectors yeah. are like you know nothing; just put a perspex cut out, and then when the person lights up, you come and walk in. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that's the first little hologram thing. And it relates to the future of employment too. It does. It does. Like you know, it's just replacing it. Down. You can see the kind of background as well. Now, second one, which I thought was really cool. What this is place. a hologram 3D image display using lightning. Oh, it's very exciting. <laughs> so uh, pretty much like you know ionizing air, or the same way that you know uh, lightning strikes work. Oh, and it's actually using lightning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You like you, you touch it, you like fry your hand. Like they're all like miniature lightning bolts in there. <laughs> like, how cool is that? that? <laughs> when you say like oh, it's using lightning, you're like what? That's that's like some bullshit term for no, like... no a actual thing. Like they, they interview the guy and they say like, is it dangerous? It's like yes, <laughs> very dangerous. So I'm not really sure, like for either of these, they're not really going to yeah. impact a consumer market or impact our daily lives too much. It's more just, oh, that's neat. Love the holographs. See, I don't care for holographs. They're cool. Oh, they're holographs good. would be cool. I, when it actually works out, but I can't even imagine like the, the physics that can be involved. You can't just stop them in the middle of the air, like not something, you know, Star Wars-y type. Well, you know, nanoparticles. Yeah, well, that, that's probably the, the best gravity. one. Yeah, well, see, it's still <laughs> defying gravity. It's all about like tiny little microscopic little uh, helicopters. Yeah, that float. Well, that could work actually. Pretty well. <laughs> well, something just chucked up in the air, just emitting like that way. Still a while though. Taking all the powder. tricks. Anyway, so yeah, they're just two little cool gimmicks that I found. I thought they're kind of awesome. Come on, a three D image with lightning. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> It's a butterfly tree. I'm totally gonna put that in the title. <laughs> that always gets people, you know. Like I've always had like a few, drop a few episodes, put like a crazy title, and people come in and say, "Hey, <laughs> I watched your episode just for the title." I was like, oh, "Okay, thank you." And they're like, "I'll never watch it again." Oh. Like, oh. 
<laughs> Glass. No, they don't say that. Come on. Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, Singularity Cup. Haven't talked about those guys for a long time. No. Because they haven't had many interesting things. They're, they're mm. getting late. But anyway. Late, yeah, yeah. Could yeah. be that time of the month. <laughs> that was a horrible day. I joke. know. Um, this is a robotic farm for hydroponic lettuce in Belgium. Cool. Like... The Belgian people eat a lot of lettuce? <laughs> Like they don't have to. <laughs> okay, fine. They, they might export it, you don't know. Yeah. Um, so this is awesome. I'll just a national plan for this. Um, <laughs> so it, it is literally a entire factory that is completely autonomous. Far out. Apart from the people filming it. Yeah. I guess. That's <laughs> so, incredible. So they, it's, all, it's all hydroponics. Mm -hmm. um, and they just, the robots plant the seeds, the lettuce seeds. They grow them. They monitor the temperature. They, they bring everything. them up to, oh, to full rats. growth. And then they harvest them. That's and then incredible. package them and then... Like That's this, this, absolutely incredible! This is the future of food right here. Yeah! Just no human input whatsoever. Yeah. You just plonk down a factory, give it the inputs like water and say a few seeds to start off. You leave it alone and it gives you out. Lettuce. Yeah. That is it's, incredible. And why, why, not, why stop at lettuce? Absolutely why not go with incredible. everything? Absolutely yeah. incredible. And obviously with that you save like a ridiculous amount of water because it's hydroponics. It's yeah, drip, yeah. drip based. You don't even need soil, so no. and all you need to do is like feed some kind of nutrients into the water. Yeah, I'm not sure. No, they do that without. Without. But uh, yeah, yeah, they just sit there in the water though. But yeah, far um, out. And this kind of links into. Have you guys seen the the latest uh, Zeitgeist movie, Zeitgeist Three? Mm. I mean, the, the the previous Zeitgeist are a little bit controversial. You know, don't don't disregard <laughs> it for that. Um, but the latest one is pretty damn awesome. They're basically talking about how. Um, our entire global, basically, capitalism system is all built on infinite growth on a finite foundation. Obvious, and you know, you can't, can't work forever. No. It's going to fail at some point, and some might say it's happening now. Um, but, mm -hmm. but if you get actually about, I think like an hour and a half, two hours in, like it starts off very slow talking about genetics and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so I, I got about, you got, yeah. got about halfway in, and I was just like, yeah. I, I stuck with it, I got a few beers, and I stuck with it, and it started getting interesting. And at the end, they started talking to, um... I think it's Jack some Jack Cousteau or something. <laughs> Not really. Jack Cousteau. Some some French guy that's really cool. He who like he was really big back in the seventies. Yeah. Um, he's the founder of the Venus Project. Mm -hmm. um, and they're actually talking about you know an era where everything is completely abundant, like abundant energy, abundant food, you know, and everything is just automated. Yeah. The only way you can actually get abundance is through automation. And he actually has some uh, some pictures and designs because he's not he's an architect. Um, of these giant, like, you know, multi-story buildings that are just devoted to growing food, hydroponically, yeah, yeah. and automatically. I think I've seen like, uh, different versions of that. Kind like, of how cool would that be? This is kind of the start of that. Yeah. Well, this is just fantastic. Like, having actually no human interaction with growing food, like, far out. That's yeah. just great. Because you can ensure round-the-clock sort of yeah. perfection. Yeah, with that. You know, it'd be interesting exactly. to know exactly what the inputs are, because then start like just trying to automate it just as much as possible, just for all the food going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which is kind of cool. Right so there. this, uh, yeah, you, sorry. So this kind of leads into the future of employment. Yeah, oh, I've still got my one last story. Oh, god damn it! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my last story. China's bus. Don't you want to hear about China's bus? No. Oh come on, it's a bus. It's okay, my, it's a train system. Oh, no, yeah, cars. this is it. No, it's not actually. No cars in it. It's a bus that actually drives along the road, but it's up on top. So cars drive underneath it. It doesn't impact the road in any way, shape, or form. They just drive. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. cars can actually go underneath the bus. So this is really, really cool. Like, because, you know, China's got that major, major traffic problem. Like, everyone's wanting a car right now. They can't do jack about it. Yeah. And so they've come up with this idea called, what is it? Ch something bus. Big bus. Mega straddle bus. So, Mega bus, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, so it's really fantastic. Like, check out the video. It looks fantastic. It's not actually like an idea up in the air either. It's actually something that's going to be happening. It. Yeah, they've got a pilot program doing 186 oh, awesome. kilometers of track. So it's not just, you know, like just up there. They're actually doing this. It's fantastic. Like it's a new way of uh, public transportation. I haven't actually seen this before. I thought it... <laughs> I thought it might have been, um, they've had those, uh, trains where you can actually... Yeah, the little modules like, coming off. No, no, where, where, uh, like on a road where one car kind of, uh, drives in the front and then everyone oh, else can just road automatically... Train. Yeah, yeah, road yeah. Train, yeah. Automatically drives behind. Yeah, yeah. But again, with it's that, like, cool. would you go under a bus? Well, <laughs> it, I mean, if it fits, if imagine, you say, the centre of Sydney. If it was huge. Yeah. yeah. Let's say the centre of Sydney, it takes up two lanes and it just drives around like that because then you get, you're guaranteed to get there faster than anyone else and you're not impacting any flow of traffic. Yeah. It's just such a brilliant idea and I'd love, I'm going to follow this and I'd love to see how it actually works out. 
I think this could be a really like you know big futuristic thing that you go to somewhere new and instead of having a monorail or trams or any of yeah. that shit, you've actually got these cool floating buses. There you awesome. go. No more bus drivers. Well, except for the guy driving the bus. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Indeed. So, so let's uh, go on to the future, future of employment. employment. Yes. So Ted linked us to this Odesk link. It basically, I think it basically just says that uh, online work, so people working solely online, has actually been growing quite a lot. So it's um, apparently employers are spending more than $115 million on online work in 2010. So I would have thought it would have been more than that. See, this might be just a, what would they classify as online work? Because this is through Odesk, they might be actually speaking through that type of thing. Oh, uh, it might just be Odesk only. Yeah, well, it might be, yeah, that type of way. Because 115 million, like, I'd guarantee that some large corporations would spend more than that just in their own for online work. Yeah. Commuting and stuff. But I don't know, well, check out this thing, I can't, because it doesn't really say. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it is probably just... No, it's 2010 review and future predictions, a comprehensive look at the state of waterless economy. Hmm. Well, maybe that's, that's a, by borderless, actually, you know, other people out there and stuff. No, well, yeah, maybe they're going off their own stats internally. Yeah. But anyway, future employment. <laughs> so, what do you think is future employment? Um, well, we've talked about this before. Um, it's going to end up, the end game is everyone is their own employer. Everyone's their own entrepreneur. Yeah, everyone's their own. And yeah. they, they're, do, they're freelancers, and they do it on a task-for-task -task basis, yeah. based on their skills. Like, you're, you're not going to, it's not going to be work for a corporation for all your life or for the next three years where you have to go into a building with yeah. other people working in that same building and you have one defined job that you do nine to five, five days a week. Yeah. Fuck that. that that's going to be interesting. I, I, I disagree a little bit with that being totally out just so you, so you still get that culture of actually people interacting. But yeah, it might okay. still be more like, say, a virtual environment or like you actually interact in, in that regard, say like, you know, a full on 3D glasses and that. And you still like, you work in a communal area. Yeah, so I think a lot of the, the best ideas actually come from that thing, but still on a maybe entrepreneurial type basis that yeah. you try and say for any idea or any way you push the corporation forwards, you actually gain some shares in it or you actually gain some ownership state. So everything you do is actually a little bit done that way. Yeah. Well, it won't be individual freelance work. It would obviously be like working mm. with others, but yeah, but virtually on a on a task for task basis. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So like some corporation needs or company or person needs something done. They put out the call, and then people just come, and then form together a group and just do it. Well, so that's a fantastic thing. I really like with Odesk and like all the other ones, like you know, Rent a Coder and all, all yeah. the others. Like it's just really cool that if you're actually one like you know developing for it or like doing translation stuff, you can actually just log on and you actually see a lot of like, for lack of a better word, like you know, RPG style like quests and all <laughs> of that. Which quest do you want to complete today? And so you say, hey, I'll do that, and you get this certain many points, which is your yeah. money and you can actually start getting more and more people onto that type of system where they can just pull out their like their glowing rectangle and actually see what they have open right now, what they can actually well, start completing. Although the trend is like employers in the developed world use Odesk. Yeah. Employees tend to be developing world people. Yeah. Well, because of the whole economics. I just don't think it, it's been cracked in the developing world now. Yeah. I mean, I think a system like this is fantastic. I think it would work spectacularly well in the yeah, Especially for all the shit that's going down the developing that's it. world. Like, the people, developed world. Unemployment is like crazy. And a lot of the time, the, the people that you can find on, say, Odesk can't do specific um, uh, jobs or activities that you want them to yeah. do. And I mean, why not? There's no actual real reason why it can't be done in the first world. And then you could actually have jobs done like that. Like, it's, rather than going through the classifieds and looking through it that way, say you've just been fired, you're like, oh, no, hey, I need some quick money. You sign up to this, do a few tests, prove your skills, show where you've been done yeah. before, and you just start doing some work that way. <laughs> yeah. Make it nice and easy. Ultimate competition. I mean, fantastic. Bring this down. We don't need this anymore. Oh, yeah, good point. Um, oh, it makes it so cooler. Oh, God, it's a hot thing. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I see that being a really, really big thing that... That's, that's fairly new, near future though, like how, how long do you think? Like, probably about... I'm yeah. thinking by the end of this decade, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty soon. I'm thinking that'll thing. be, like it won't be, you know, everyone will be doing it. It'll be, no. But it'll be yeah. fairly significant, like, you know, 40, 50, 60% of them. Yeah, a very large segment of the population. You look, you look at um, the workforce now, like, uh, this is another thing that Zyklash brought, out, brought up, which is really cool. Um, something like 75% of the current workforce now hmm. can be completely replaced by automation. Hells, yeah. Like using current today technology. Yeah, yeah. Today's technology. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they're saying like, you know, <laughs> part of the, uh, well, there's a theory, but part of the reason why unemployment everywhere is so huge is because technology and science have actually propelled automation in so many manufacturing jobs that literally all that's left in the entire economy is just uh, uh, services based. Yeah. 
Well, it's funny is... actually speaking about the like the American economy. That's where it's hit it the most because like you know they yeah. say, oh, Americans' manufacturing bases are any there. <laughs> They've got like they do forty percent more than China or sixty percent more. It's one of those two figures. I forget which one. Really? And yeah, they do more automation. more manufacturing. Yeah, it's uh, all it's all automation. They employ they're not, a shit ton less people. Yeah, because they don't need to. <laughs> they don't need to. They've all got robots. They've got the most high tech factories yeah. like in the states, and they that's where they do all the output. All the jobs that have gone over to China have actually been the ones where it's like your low cost labor can actually be used yeah. instead. And that's kind of a, that, that's a that's a really interesting thing that just doesn't ever click. That the vast majority of products, even probably these these clothes that we're wearing now, and everything we have around robots. is we're made by robots. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, robots. Like, yeah, thank you. But how do you know they're not controlling us? Well, they are. It's a symbiotic relationship. It is. You can't really get rid of them because then we'd die as well. <laughs> I mean, like, the utter complexity it takes to make, like, you know, shirts and all of this. And yeah. Don't get me started on the camera. Yeah. Like, God damn. Well, it's like the fantastic show, How It's Made. It's really cool. It's awesome Just show. robots doing robot stuff. We'll put a link to it. Yeah. Go <laughs> okay, um, so what about 20 years from now? 30 years from now? 40 uh, years from now? Well, see, I, th I think the whole uh, era of abundance... Yeah, to talk about like exactly. if you look along the order, the era of automation, like we have to get past our, our current issues of energy, you know, our current issues of food shortages, and all that sort of stuff. It's mainly just energy. As long as we energy. can have the energy, we can make it all. We can order more, <laughs> more resources. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. We're not you need exactly that to actually... there. Yeah, the, the rare yeah. stuff and all the little itty bitty stuff. So if we get past all those issues, then we can create an era of abundance where just literally everything we need is made for us. Automatically done by machines. Yeah. By machines. And Every, then everything we need. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There'll be nothing left that, like, yeah. you, you'll live a life of, like, it's a utopian view. Yeah. You live a life of utopia. Yeah, that's that it. A life sense. of luxury. You don't have to worry about, you know, starving or doing anything. You'll get the latest yeah. things. I mean, let's, let's talk here about, like, 3D printers, like, to put that in your mind that, say, yeah. 3D printers here, it's, like, free to just go in, you just got to put in your goo, whatever goo it is, and I'm sure it'd be, like, really, really cheap. You just chuck it in, you print whatever you like, yeah. and it includes your food. That's, like, you know, Star Trek replicators type stuff that, yeah. you know, just makes whatever you like. Prints your food, prints any device you want, prints yeah. anything you want. So, how would you work? What would you spend your days doing in a society like that with, say, like, Star Trek replicator? That, that's an easy idea to get yeah. your head around. Thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking, <laughs> okay. I think you just think. You just be like creative the whole time. Yeah. It's just well, the the because um, I mean the machine, the the automation, and everything. You know, mm. it wants to learn more. It needs to learn more. The, yeah. the entire yeah. global society needs to learn more. Everything's about knowledge. Yeah. You don't get innovation and new technology and better lifestyles without new ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So ideas will actually become. This is uh, related right. to the Genesis guy. Mm. Uh, in Genesis Project, which we've been talked to before. Um, it, you know, just coming up with new ideas and actually making them tangible and it becomes an idea economy where people just exactly. you know, call in new ideas and you get sort of points. There won't be any yeah. money in this system. There's no point for money. No, well, see, that's money where it becomes... Money yeah. necessary. Yeah, you can actually start removing that because, you know, money is a measure of scarcity. Like, yeah. You know, that's why you have the economic model. It's all based on scarcity. But if we start getting towards that more abundance mindset, it's really yeah. weird because you have to toss everything out that you started thinking about and that's where you could get the idea of points because ideas will still be some ideas will be still more valid than others or more worthwhile or something and it's actually that method of how do you filter out the best ideas and that's what the actual economy could be based upon like say art uh, art's a great idea or like say movies and stuff how do you actually get told that this is a good movie you want to see more like it because like, you know yeah. say YouTube's a great example like if, if you're producing a lot on YouTube and stuff and a lot of people like it you start producing more and you start really liking it like you know people chasing yeah. fame or like whatever they chase on YouTube you know yeah and then and they provide utility back to that's it that it it's another fun thing it's another creative yeah. outlet and then they can start getting rewarded by like the points in YouTube by the amount of views you've got or the amount of viewers or like you know on Twitter it's yeah. the amount of tweets that's a, that's a form of economy that's actually happening right there because they're doing it for that purpose maybe not directly but in some regard it's a way of measuring how valid their thoughts are their creative yeah. thoughts so you still think there'll be a currency of some sort? I still think there will be, yeah. Something that'll be able to be yeah. traded around or something there. Something you'll still work towards. Say an like incentive, you know, an incentive. An incentive, that's it. Say like an RPG with experience points. Yeah. Why can't you just have your <laughs> life as experience points and say, hey, I want to do this. And we've got yeah. perfect games to learn how to do it. And we start learning that. And you say, I want to start contributing to the vast body of knowledge of, a, say, you know, a super string theory or something. It says, okay, well, look, here's the path to go down. And you start getting some more points and you get to the very edge of knowledge and now start contributing to the discussion. Yeah, calling the crazy new ideas. Yeah, and start saying how you can test it and doing things. Maybe Super String Theory is not the best example for this. <laughs> Very high barrier of entry. Uh, let's say like, you know, home gardening. Because I'm looking at our science. That's easy. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, it's simple. It's, it's not too bad, but trajectories. <laughs> trajectories. <laughs> You've seen that, that comedian? 
There was, no? there was some. There was something about some guy mocking. It was on Big Bang. Mocking Sheldon scientists. Was, Sheldon was mocking it. Yeah, Big Bang. might have been something like that. Well, say gardening. Gardening would be a great example. Like you could actually start, you know, doing small things and sharing knowledge about how it works now. Like you already have them yeah. gardening forums and gardening blogs. Everyone sharing ideas. But say a measured way for that. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, look at the current economy now. Like money does not really incentivize the right things. It n n no. Think, Wait, it incentivizes yeah. it enough. I think. We well, it doesn't like you know say coming up with new ideas about anything. I mean, yeah, if, if the only way to incentivize is that is if you can turn that into a profit motive yeah. to actually yeah, well, get others okay. to buy your stuff. Which yeah. then you need marketing and you need all this other crap. Yeah, the amount of money spent marketing, God. Yeah, and, and no one, like so many people have awesome ideas, but you know, they just work a nine to five yeah. job. Well, so do you That's... think they probably still would be marketing, would say, in, in an economy of abundance? They probably would be. Like how, you'd want to say spend your points to actually get your idea out there because getting your idea out there would be the most important thing to you getting you see, what you is, out there but ideally what is what is marketing it's more it's a, distri it's a distribution distribution and it's like aligning with them with their own interests and problems yeah in yeah exactly so wouldn't you just be able to do that instantly you come with an idea it distributes it filters it, it to the right person it's a recommendation yeah, good engine point. yeah yeah fair point it's you don't need marketing with a recommendation engine because no. it, it gets that idea out to the people that will be most aligned to it yeah and then even test with the people who are just slightly aligned yeah, and actually it. test the idea and see how it goes through especially yeah. if you don't allow gaming you don't allow people to start actually paying for it and going that yeah. way we'll see the machine decides yeah, where it filters, like, and what? then it's the... Well, then it decides what's a good idea and what's a bad idea. Yeah, the machine's the one decide. Well, no, it... Maybe? Well, see, it doesn't decide, because <laughs> it, it, it'd send it out to the people, and it'd see what feedback it gets back from the people, and that's how the machine would learn. So it's still using us in the equation, but feedback. a few years after yeah, that, it wouldn't much. really need it, because it could start making it itself. Yeah, it'd be like, well, this is a good idea, this is a good idea, this is a bad one, this is a bad one. Well, see, so you could actually tell people that. Like, imagine Smite. how smart you'd get. <laughs> oh, imagine how smart you get about, like, starting, you're going to start learning something, you just bring up, open up your phone or whatever it is then, and you start saying, hey, like, how can I start doing this? And it starts recommending you down the path because it's done it before, it knows specifically what to do. Going back to that yeah. fridge thing, with everyone connected, you can actually start learning because everyone's tried doing it before. Yeah. I guarantee there's been like a million people who've done like gardening or billions of people who've done gardening. They could give tons of hints about it if it was all recorded and their failures were recorded. Yeah. And successes. Okay. We should like, what, what's between... Uh, <laughs> future employment between that where you know there is no money or whatever and it's just ideas and stuff yeah. and people work online like a no desk type model yeah how do you get from there what's the what's the in between they'll probably be they'll probably both be going for quite a while I think yeah it'll maybe well Odesk like small. Odesk isn't, isn't even near what we were talking about no of like everyone, everyone, everyone no. working online and collaborating like it's, not, it's only really mainly we third need, world yeah, we still need to get toward um, perfect collaboration, like working at home. Like, sure, there's a lot of people now working at home, but it's still not the same. The same yeah, UI, same the same. Yeah. The same. You know, I still think you'd actually gain on. more, like yeah, being in a, in a closed group of people who are all working on the same thing as well. Yeah, but see, if you can replicate that physical form, yeah, digitally, yeah, then, then the whole well, that's the other thing. The, the idea of we didn't talk, we didn't talk about corporations become obsolete at that point. Yeah. I mean, corporations are merely co uh, collections of people working towards a similar goal. Hmm. So, corporations could be created on the fly. If, if an individual has an idea and they like, oh, I want to do this, and you're seeing it, there's some beginning to well, People are becoming more and more corporations. Yeah. You like look at it, signed up. Uh, Kickstarter, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. yeah, yeah, like yeah. Crowd, crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, whatever. If you, a single individual can come up with an idea, spread it enough that people will actually join together, provide their money, their ideas, their input, their skills, their knowledge, their yeah. technology, their connections, their and to, to actually create yeah. create a company on the fly. Yeah. And it doesn't just have to be a services company or a digital company. It can be, it can be a physical company like Shapeways. Yeah. Actual making goods Prince, like three 3D print stuff is, is Kickstarter the one? I don't think it is Kickstarter. There's another one like uh, where you actually say you make a prototype of a model and enough people say they'll buy it, they'll actually print the model. I forget the site it's called. I thought that was Shapeways. That is Shapeways? Yeah, are you, are you talking about the iPhone thing they did? With the, the iPhone stands? thing and then there was, uh, there was yeah, another that was, one that recently was done about through, cables. Well, that was done through Kickstarter and then printed on Shapeways. Ah, okay, right, right. Yeah, yeah they're, that, they're separate fantastic. sites, but yeah. yeah. Well, so that could be another thing in there. So yeah, collaboration is one of the big main problems that this actually faces. Yeah. And that's, but that, I still feel there's another in-between stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so too. What's what? the, it was the other one. The, what, the idea, I think, with, you know, um, maybe the abundance model, it has to start with, say, what we have in abundance right now, which is, like, you know, ideas and digital media and stuff. Yeah. And then there needs to be a model worked around that, and maybe that could actually grow up into it. Yeah. 
We've talked Excellent. before about how the the idea, knowledge, innovation economy is far better than our current one because it's mm. it, it is infinite. You can get infinite growth then on infinite like ideas are infinite. Yeah, you can you it's, can actually get infinite growth here because you just because you're not based on you're only you're more literally your only your only core base is energy. Yeah. If you can sort that out, if you can, we can get renewable energy. We can, you know, do the Dyson sphere. You know, go back to the future of energy episode. Yeah, <laughs> do that until we until we use up all the energy in the solar system and keep on going through. Yeah, go through put that straight into computation so the knowledge that's produced can be computed, yeah. made sure it's the best. And I think we've uh, established we've gone through. I think yeah. a lot of it there. There's no still real conclusions. Like a, yeah, I still There's feel like something I'm missing, missing something. If you if you can work out what it was <laughs> or add your own, there I has don't to, know. That's, yeah, a step going up to there, like. Know the end game, know currently where it's a little bit going, but how it actually gets towards the end game is... That's always the thing, we always know the end game, and then we know we have to work our way back. Yeah, that's it. Like the hive mind, everyone will be connected by neural... Yeah. Neuron, neuron, and then it's like, what happens then? Yeah. Or before that. Well, so it even goes back to the internet of like, you know, AOL days and way back when. They all knew that like, you know, a TV had displayed on through the computer and do all of that, you'd be able to pick any yeah. episode. No one knew how it was done until for about 10 years. Well, they even knew that the internet was going to create AI. And yeah. computers would, you would be able to create AI with them. Yeah. They just had no idea how, and then they, 30 years of AI research later. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, give us your thoughts where you think it will be going that way, and where the actual progression will be towards, like, you know, just totally independent. I mean, there's a few people already doing it, but... Yeah. The pieces are out there. What's that, what's that quote? The future's uh, the, already here? Yeah, the future's already here, it's just not widely distributed yet. I think that's Gibson, I think. Or connected. Does that make sense? It's like the pieces are already out there, it's just you've got to bring them all together and then you yeah. create the future. Exactly. Get some consilience going. Consilience? Consilience. I swear you keep making up words. No, it's not a word. It's not a made up word. What's the, the one you made up today? Quadenza. Come on, you guys know what a quadenza is. <laughs> What's a Jesus. quadenza? Anyway, that's a great way to end it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you next week. Uh, I'm Tristan Grace. Nathan Waters. <laughs> See ya. What's my hand? Yes.